Well, I'm gonna need your help today, folks, as we figure out where the Leatherman Charge Plus fits in the multi-tool realm and particularly in my multi-tool collection. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. I'm your host, Aaron. Gonna do an integrated video today um, on the new Leatherman Charge Plus. Never done the Charge, now they have the Plus version. We're gonna talk about what that makes, what that is, what that makes it to be a, a, the Plus versus the old version. And we're also gonna put it head to head against, just for more comparative and kind of concept comparison the leatherman super tool 300 monster beast tank arguably in my opinion the strongest leatherman on the market some of you may say it's the surge some of you may say it's some of the other ones i just love the simplicity of it, it we're going to see that today it's just a monster 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 tool and i love it um, and we're also going to talk about the gerber center drive as a competitive option and positives, negatives, how that all fits in. Because to be honest with you, uh, there's a lot going for the charge, but when we talk about price that we're gonna look at today, options, capabilities, what you really use it for, what you don't, um, I'm, having a really tar tar la la. I'm having a really hard time figuring out where this fits in the system. I know that this is like my big old monster tool that can do anything in any job that is needed. It may not be the fastest, you know, deploying with some of the tools and different things like that. Everything is two-handed deployment and different things like that, but this thing is indestructible and a monster. And then if I need more like quick action, one-handed deployment stuff, then I'm going with the center drive. And so there's aspects to both of these tools that the charge offers us but at the price point to value to all those different things, I'm, I'm having a difficult time figuring out really where it fits. So I hope that we will discover it together and discover whether or not it's gonna fit inside a system that you're wanting to build out. Regardless if it's uh, you're a handyman and you're using, you're, you use a multi-tool a lot and you're wanting to upgrade, maybe you are a contractor, um, you know, somebody in construction, you're just a handyman around your own home, you're a mechanic or you're a survivalist, a prepper, or somebody who likes to carry a large multi-tool for everyday carry, whatever the scenario, I wanna answer that for us today and hopefully discover where this fits in because it's it's interesting i'm just having a hard time in this video i've tried to make like three different takes now and it's it's eluding me and uh, i hope we can discover it together on this take so a quick rundown of the tools on the charge and what you're going to get uh, you're getting their new upgraded nylon sheaths that have recently come out you're getting those dual pouches elastic pouches on the other side belt ride right there button snap instead of velcro this is their old design had those little pouches but it had this massive velcro the one nice thing is that it did have horizontal um attachments so you could carry it horizontal on your belt uh you can't do that with the new one i would have liked to have seen that but it's a nice you know nothing really to complain about you are getting the bit kit right here not the extender and then the pocket clip and stuff that we uh, are looking at here today and i'll dive into that in a little bit but um without going into a lot of detail because we're going to hit this way more in detail a little bit later we have a knife all on the outside we've got the saw We've got a serrated blade with a seatbelt cutter. Again, we're gonna go into detail here in just a little bit. And then a file on the outside. We've got the pliers. Then on one side here, we've got your Phillips head, flathead screwdriver, and a can opener, bottle cap opener. That's great. Then on the other, we do have scissors and a really nice pair of scissors. So um, when it comes to the larger tools, neither one of these guys are going to have scissors that we're looking at today. Some of you will find the scissors a major value. Some of you are like, eh, never really use them. I don't really ever find myself needing scissors on multi-tools. It's extremely rare. So it's nice, but it's, you know, um, not like this crazy selling point to me. This one is really interesting. So we have this flathead over here, kind of pry bar, super strong, thick very thick, you know, longer screwdriver, prying tool, you know, open can paint cans and that type of thing. And then we also have this really minuscule um, mini, I'm trying to unrelease, there we go, swapping these out there, um, Phillips head, flathead uh, screwdriver, which would be like for tinkering, I guess, you know, like working on a watch, working on your glasses, Something like that. I have never had a need for this in the several months I've now carried in, in EDC regularly in my pack, the charge. Never once I've been like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I have this tool. Don't use it. Um, maybe for you, it's a total selling point. For me, it, I, I don't have it. I, don't, I mean, I don't need it. I don't use it. Um, it's just kind of there. The nice thing is that all these tools, every single one of them is either liner locked and the interior ones, let's see here, our lock back design, just to give you kind of the concept here. So like a lock back knife, 
you depress that and then it will close. Otherwise it's locked in. It's not gonna accidentally close on you. That's a big selling point and cool plus. Now I have this, this aspect um, out here, which is really important, I believe. Um, and we're gonna kind of go into detail a little bit more is that the screwdriver here on the charge is um, regrettably short. I guess that's what I will say. Uh, it is doable for flush things basically against walls, but if you have to go in anywhere, it's pretty fat, gonna take up a ton of space and is really unusable. And you have to get their extended bit kit for about 18 to $20 more. It fits and slides in here. And then you put your bit in that way. Then you actually have you know full extension. It's pretty solid in there. There's a little bit of wobble around, but at least you get that extension there. Um, but you're gonna have to pay for that and add you know, to the tool. Now the super tool over here is going to have a, a really good larger, you know, thinner um, Phillips and flathead setup when it comes to um, the designs. So here's the Phillips head just to give you an example. So we're looking at about two inches, really narrow and precise, much better than what comes standard on the charge. When we line up those pivots, just so you can see, I mean, that's a massive difference in just the narrowness of the, the tool. So um, the super tool can definitely reach further down. And then um, we're going to talk about, you know, accessibility in a little bit. But the center drive has an external screwdriver that when you line up the pivots, significantly longer. So uh, it's regrettable, even if it came standard just with a longer, a little bit narrower neck. I really hope that Leatherman kind of gets that part figured out because that is a major part of the tool that you want to use a lot. And it's kind of unusable most of the time, particularly in more narrow, tighter places, you have to purchase that secondary piece. And unlike these two where it's integrated in part of the tool, uh, this, you know, has to kind of fit in this pouch. And yeah, it's probably not going anywhere, but I mean, it's a secondary part that could fall out, get lost, whatever. And then you're out 20 bucks and you have to go get another one. And in that moment when you need it, it could be missing from your pouch. And that would really suck where these two tools don't have that problem. So let's go ahead and hit the plier portion here. Now, one of the things that makes this the plus versus just the original charge is now they have added replaceable teeth. That is a major selling point for me. When multi-tools, regardless of the brand, don't have replaceable teeth, it always makes me a little hesitant to use it on harder tasks. You know, I'm a little concerned. Am I gonna roll the, the teeth and then I either have to send it back to the factory and hope that they can fix it, um, or the you know tool's basically shot. Instead of just being able to do my thing and if it jacks it up in any way, sweet, $10, $15 max, and I can replace the teeth. I really like that. It gives more versatility and just more reliability, in my opinion, to a tool, regardless of the brand. So with the charge, I would say of the three that we're looking at today, it's um, kind of in the middle, I guess. Uh, what we have here is a really nice precision needle nose. They connect really well right there. Just little tiny gaps through those teeth. Then we have, I would say, medium um, teeth right here to hold bolts and that type of thing. You could get medium to small bolts. Uh, and or nuts and you know tighten those things down not spring loaded but you got a pretty wide opening right there to be able to get your clamp uh, on and then you know cut through wire or whatever you know the thing may be that you're using this portion through very strong you know very reliable then we come to the super tool and this is like some of the again it's, and this is just a monster and i love it this thing is like a tank you know the the survivalists tool do anything tool. So um, we have a little bit blunter, not by much, but just a hair blunter tip right there. Um, and then they connect at that very tip. And then there's that little gap in between. You can see there that the bolt um, area where you would grab bolts is larger. So you could get larger, you know, nuts and bolts around there. The teeth are the same size. Uh, and then it's just strength strengthened, a lot larger pivot port and about the same thickness on the pivot point, but just a wider, stronger pivot point. Um, you are gonna have, I believe, a small crimper in between here. You're gonna have a much larger, you know, um, crimper down in here on the super tool. So uh, very nice. So this is obviously the strongest one. This is really good. And then we have over here, the center drive. And what we have with the center drive is a larger teeth portion right here than what you're getting on uh, the charge. So you could get larger bolts with the center drive. It has a little bit of a blunter needle nose, and I would say the bluntest of all three. 
with the needle nose so that may be a positive or a negative connects there at the tip and then just minute you know light coming down the center and then you do have those replaceable teeth uh, they are a little bit smaller than what you're going to get on leatherman so you may not get quite as large a gauge of wire to be able to go through but it does have you know stripping capability um, and hardened you know galvanized wire you know sized teeth to be able to handle that no crimping action down here in the neck that may be a positive or a negative i've never had to crimp anything um, but for some of you that may be a really big selling point and you use that a lot the super tool was not spring loaded the center drive is spring loaded i like it it's a good smooth action and uh, the pivot point is nice and large really strong and you're getting about the same thickness maybe just a hair thinner than you would be getting on the super tool um, the center drive is a little bit thinner um, overall. So actually we get into areas possibly um, sideways. It has kind of the same thickness as the Super Tool. So it's kind of this weird blend of the Charge and the Super Tool. So things just to think about. I wouldn't say any one is like better or worse. All I would say is basically if you need you know strength, Super Tool, Precision would be the charge and kind of a blending of the two, then you're gonna get the um, center drive. So accessibility of tools is a major factor in these items. To how easy is it to access individual tools? Now the Super Tool 300 is an old school classic, no accessibility, you have to use two hands to get to the pliers as well as any of your other tools that you may want. A positive with that is that particularly like with the knife blade and the saw blade, when you open them up and then if you were to use them for an extended period of time, obviously you would collapse the tool back down like this. It's giving you a very natural profile like you would see in most pocket knives or fixed blades. Just to give you an example here, ZT, great video coming out soon. Very natural, right? I mean, this looks very similar. So it's a very ergonomic feel. So if you're using the knife for an extended, or the saw for an extended period of time, this feels very comfortable and more controllable and safer because if I do accidentally slip up because of a hard task or I'm stabbing something or prying, whatever, I have a lot more space to kind of catch myself before I slice my hand. Whereas with the other tools that we're looking at here today, particularly knives, I'll just give this an example. These are one-handed options, which is great. So very accessible liner locks. This would be a lock back design, arguably stronger on the Super Tool. Again, giving the concept, the Super Tool is very strong, heavy duty use. This guy's still very capable, but you know, not as strong with that liner lock. Very comfortable, quick cuts, very easy, but not as ergonomic because I have this big shelf that I kind of have to rest my thumb on. It's just not as natural as what the Super Tool offers, and I could slide up and cut myself very easily. There's no guard or protective piece, whereas there's just more of that with the Super Tool and, and multi-tools like this, like the rebar, and there are a few other ones out there. So it's food for thought for you to consider, but um, that knife, very easy to access, and the knife on the Gerber, also same thing. 154 cm on the charge, that's a really big plus. I really like that aspect a lot. Better edge retention, a little more, more rust resistant. Um, I've been asking for that for a long time to see more tools like that, or at least giving us the option. You know, you could save some money and go 420 high carbon or uh, get 154 cm, so it's awesome. So this is definitely gonna have a really good um, edge retention level. Uh, versus the 420 high carbon on the other two guys here. But this is going to have the Gerber is going to have the longest at three and a quarter inches. These guys are both going to be about three inches. So there is a little bit extra length that you're getting out of this. But again, that same concept of for quick cuts, not a big deal. But for extended cutting tasks, it can get kind of uncomfortable, a little um, uh, painful, and you don't have any really guard if you do accidentally slide up to protect yourself versus the 300. So the other tools that the charge is gonna have accessible on the app exterior, now that is a one-handed deployment, it's great. Uh, there's a one-handed deployment also for the serrated safety knife. Really like this tool a lot. This um, rope cutter, seatbelt cutter is awesome and works fantastic. So I think this the Charge Plus would be a great first responder tool for those um, who are first responders. I think this would be awesome and the serrated blade works fantastic as well. And again, it's you know one-handed deployment. You don't have to open your tool to get to a safety knife. You can do it one-handed while you're running to a scene or you know getting situated. It's just less work. The other two, you do have to use two hands, but they're very accessible. You have a three inch file 
with lots of different grits on there. Again, all liner locks here. And then you are gonna have a three inch wood saw with a nice liner lock. But again, that concept of it's not quite as ergonomic as what the Super Tool will offer. And if I did bind up on the wood, I could have my hand slide up and tear open my hand. Whereas if it was lined up like how the Super Tool is, and the Super Tool does have a saw in there as well, that will be a, just a hair longer, but it will be lined up like the knife blade is. It's a little safer and a little bit more controllable. But to get to the main aspects that you're gonna be using a lot, because realistically, particularly with the charge, um, the tool that I'm gonna be using the most and that I would want like quick access to is the knife, um, maybe the safety blade, uh, but I don't use the file or the wood saw very often. What I do use a lot when I'm pulling out a Leatherman tool or a multi-tool is gonna be the pliers, so I have to use two hands for that, um, or the screwdriver bit. And I, again, I would have to use two hands for that. Not the case on the Gerber center drive. Again, I have access with that knife, liner lock, very similar. Then this is a huge selling point. We have this three and a quarter inch one-handed deploying screwdriver bit. The final thing as well, as you saw, I have to open this tool two-handed. I have to open this tool two-handed to get to the pliers. Not the case with the Gerber. It runs on a track. It is spring-loaded. These two Leathermans are not which I do like the spring-loaded feature. It does have the replaceable teeth, just like on the new Charge, which is a big plus there, the Charge Plus, and the replaceable teeth on the, um, what's it called, Super Tool 300. The cool thing with the Gerber is that it actually has three times. So as long as they don't crack, and if you just you know rolled the edge, basically, you can unscrew them, rotate the teeth, and screw it in again. And you basically have three, three times of being able to do that before you actually have to replace the teeth with the, the Leathermans, they're just one and done. I would say the Leathermans are a little bit bigger, possibly a little bit stronger, but not by much, not anything that I've noticed with my testing. And then again, you can slide this in one-handed and close this guy back up, locks the tool up and will not deploy. Then when you need to use it again, you pull it out. Boom, sorry, it's hard to do on frame here. Boom, and you're good to go. Not the case with the Charge or with the Super Tool and most other tools on the market. So that may be a huge selling point. It may be a gimmick that you're like, I don't need that. I really like the knife, the screwdriver, and the pliers, which are the three main tools you use when you pull out a Leatherman or a multi-tool, uh, which are all accessible, whereas there's nothing accessible with the Super Tool. And realistically, it's really only the knife that's accessible one-handed um, with the Charge Plus. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit the price point aspect here. And um, there's lots of different options that are out there. I'm just gonna try and give you like a general overview. There's different coatings, different bit kits, different molly attachment, cheese and blah, blah, blah. Um, so we have links over to Amazon as well as Bleed HQ. When you guys use those hyperlinks, really helps me to do what we do here. Thank you guys so much. So any of the gear items that you see in this video or any other video, when you use the hyperlinks to Blade HQ or Amazon, really helps us out and helps me buy these items here and do videos and do content. So thank you guys for your support. Blade HQ does have a heritage version of most Leatherman tools right now. And I'm finding that they come with like a leather sheath versus these nylon ones. So if you like leather, and they're usually about 15 to $20 cheaper than the normal going rate. So I, I believe that's a limited thing that um, is happening through Leatherman and Blade HQ. And I, I don't know if other companies are carrying the, the Heritage version as well, but um, check that out. I haven't seen any Heritage ones over on Amazon, but Blade HQ seems to have them and they are less expensive, which is pretty cool. And you are getting that leather sheath and you still get all the other uh, options that I'm seeing there. So just food for thought there, but it, just a snapshot in time. The Charge Plus here, with the setup that we're looking at without the bit kit here is going to be um, $140 normal going rate. I think the heritage version was like 110. So again, that's the example. And that's with this polymer you know, handle scale setup. There is the titanium handle scale setup with the different teeth. That's like 160, 170, I believe um, as well. So that's just something to consider. So $140 normal going rate. Then when we add the bit that we've been talking a little bit about today, that's about another eight so realistically, you're looking at almost 160 with the entire bit kit extension and the overall design. To give you some perspective and comparison, particularly the one that we've been really hitting it up against, the Gerber uh, center drive, this guy's going for about $80 for everything that you see here. There are again, other options uh, that you can get larger, you know, black, you can get blacked out, you can get Molly compatible, you can get more bits 
and those can go for like $120. But average going rate, 80 bucks for what you see here and what we've been comparing it to. So realistically, about half the price of what you have to do to get this charge to give you the capability and the sense of performance with like the screwdriver um, and all of that that we're seeing on the center drive. So that's some definite food for thought that you need to think about when you're laying down your hard-earned money. Then over here, the Super Tool 300 is uh, $80 to $90, depending on if you get the satin version or the blacked out version. The blacked out version usually is about $10 more. So um, they may have the heritage version that may be a little cheaper, but usually it's about 80 bucks, same as the center drive. And again, um, about half when you think of the BitKit extension that what the, the charge is. So the charge is definitely a, a more expensive item. So you need to really, and that's what I'm hoping to do in this video, guys, is help you weigh the odds. Is that extra money really worth this particular tool? Or is it a different tool that Leatherman makes? Or is it the tool that Gerber makes? And all these tools are made in the USA, which is awesome. Plus, with great warranties, 25 year warranty on Leatherman. And I have used Gerber's warranty in the past. And I believe it's a lifetime warranty um, for all of their tools as well. So one really awesome option with the charge is that it comes standard with a really nice loop over tip up for the blade um, pocket clip. I really like it a lot. They really did an awesome job with that. It is removable with the locking mechanism here. You can slide it out and remove it if you didn't want to use it. There does come with a secondary lanyard hole that you could put in here instead. So it stands off and you could actually use like a full size carabiner through there, which is pretty sweet. Or it has an integrated smaller loop here for like say paracord and some sort of lanyard that way. So there's lots of uh, lashing options, attachment options. Um, and uh, I really like that because at about 8.3 ounces and, you know, really thick, uh, this has the potential if you, let's say, want to carry your ZT right here. Oh, yeah. Hinder designed 0566 with the black wash, by the way. Video coming soon on this. I mean, this is a five ounce multi tool. And then if we add either of these other tools that we're looking at today into a, you know, a belt carrier or something, I mean, we're looking at now like 16 ounces almost, uh, you know, 14 ounces of carry weight. So, I mean, it, it, you, you, could con you could convince me that you could leave this at home, leave one of these at home, one of these at home, and take this guy and pocket carry it. And I think it would be doable. Uh, I did it for about three weeks. I EDC'd this alone. I left all my other multi-tools at home. I left all my other pocket knives at home, went to the office, went around town, you know, grocery shopping with the family, uh, doing work, yard work, all that type of stuff. And it is doable. It's thick. It's beefy. I mean, you're going to know it's in your pocket, but it is doable. And I really do like that aspect for it. And really, as we go through this video, I really feel like that's kind of where I see this fitting in. If you want to pocket carry a massive multi-tool, I think this might be the, the right way to go with the polymer handle, lightening it up a little bit. It's still pretty beefy, but not overly crazy. Um, giving me a lot of strengths that the, the um, Super Tool 300 has and is definitely more you know pocket friendly than the center drive. I mean, the center drive is even thicker, even you know just beefier, honkier, and not it doesn't have any pocket clip to offer. It's kind of got more abrupt angles. It's not as rounded and contoured and sleek and smooth. It has more you know quick uh, actuating options, which is nice. But it's definitely, in my opinion, a pouch ready multi tool, not a pocket ready multi tool. And you could argue that. And it's going to give you way more capability than, say, the Leatherman Skeletal CX, just as an example here at $80. Way smaller, you know, non-replaceable teeth, smaller head here. Um, the little bit that's kind of the same. A smaller uh, knife that is, you know, accessible right there. Um, 154cm, though. And uh, a bottle cap opener. I'm getting way more tools for about the same profile in the pocket in length. Uh, it's definitely thicker, as you can see here. I'll be annotating some of that stuff in right now. And I believe about three to four ounces heavier um, than the skeletal is, but you're getting way more you know, performance. So um, yeah, that, uh, that's a really cool feature. And I think that's really where I would say it would fit in. Because otherwise, I mean, if I'm going to pouch carry, I'm either going with the Gar Gerber um, center drive or I'm going with the super tool if I'm needing like a lot of work done with a multi-tool. Uh, and, and I'm going to pouch carry it or throw it in my pack. Uh, but if I need that option in the pocket, the charge, I think, is the way to go.
So there you have it. I think we have discovered where in my system it would fit. Now I'm gonna really have to take you know some food for thought and really ask myself, is that long-term a, a good solution? Is that how I wanna carry a multi-tool and invest 140, 160 really with the bit extender um, in, in, a, in a product? Uh, you guys will have to determine that as well where the Gerber Center Drive might have all the features that you need, um, where the Leatherman Super Tool might have all the features that you need. Um, the Charge is a great tool. I think it's really well made. I really like the polymer handles. I really like all of the features. There are a couple of tools in there that I didn't quite understand, You know, particularly the little screwdriver bit thing. I probably will never use it um, maybe once or twice in the whole lifetime of the tool. Um, where maybe there could have been some other different type of tool. I mean, they have almost everything on it that you can think of, which is great. Um, just, you know, maybe slimmed it down. I don't know. But um, yeah, guys, I really feel like that's where it fits in is a large pocket capable multi-tool uh, that's on the market. And you're going to get a lot of other options with the bit kit that comes standard right here. Um, in the pocket clip, you know, you don't have to upgrade and pay more like you do with some of the other tools that are out there. I believe the wave you have to pay, you know, you have to buy it separate and that type of thing. Um, and the kit and the bits and, the, and that. So there's, there's pros and cons to every aspect um, there. But I would not say it's like the ultimate Leatherman. And it really uh, does have some limitations in some of its capabilities and particularly at the price of basically double what we see here on the table, you'll have to ask yourself whether or not it does fit a need. It might be right exactly what you need or there, one of these other two tools might be the better option for you depending on what you're looking for your tool to do. So I thank you guys for coming over here today and checking out the channel. I hope that this video and this discovery together has really helped you out, make your decisions. Um, help you just spend your higher earned money wisely that you don't go blow money on a tool and you kind of realize down the line, wow, I don't really have a purpose and use for this tool. Um, you know, and that you find the right tool for every situation and scenario you might be put into. Uh, so I hope that you have experienced that and encountered that in this video. So guys, thank you so much. Uh, check us out on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, that type of stuff, throwing up stuff every single week, new things coming down the line. So you can kind of see what's up and coming projects that we're currently working on. That's another way to communicate with me. Um, you guys who are current subscribers, you're awesome. Thank you so much for your hard um, support. You know, you guys support week after week. Um, you who maybe are watching this video for the first time, you never even heard of Gideon's Tactical. I invite you to become part of the GT family. We're throwing up videos like this every single week. Um, and guys, finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.